Andreas Mikello. Good morning, everyone, and a special welcome to my colleague, Minister of Communications, Minister Dino Brigham. Thank you for those of you who are here in person and those of you who are listening on our various media. And thank you in particular to members of the media for coming to facilitate this press conference. As you are all aware, because it's been all over the press for at least months, if not years, we have had a checkered history with respect to our dress code. There have been issues that have arisen um, traditionally, there has been no uniformed policy in respect of the dress code for members of the public seeking services out of government offices, but there have been traditional approaches based on historical norms that we have been grappling with. As a result of that, quite a few members of the public have been refused entry into government offices and refused service because they have been seen to be inappropriately dressed. One of the difficulties was because there was no formal policy, there was lack of clarity with the members of the public as to which offices they could get into dressed in what form. So they may be able to get into one office dressed in a particular way, but not another office. And so because of that lack of um, certainty, there were difficulties receiving services. And because the public service is about serving the public, we thought we needed to address that issue. We are all aware of the most public examples of people who have been refused services. We had the lady who turned up in, at an office without um, sleeves and went, was turned, turned away and went and draped her curtain over her. We are aware of the gentleman who went to another office in shorts, was turned away, went and stapled um, brown envelopes to his pants and was allowed in. So all of these ridiculous things occurred because of the absence of a reasonable policy. So public admin, as the ministry responsible for how the public service operates, went to work on determining what should be done to treat with this issue. We did an assessment of where we were. We looked at the norms and the trends and what was happening. We prepared a report and presented it to cabinet for approval. That approval was um, received in December of last year. But we couldn't just launch it on the next day because we had to sensitize people to what the new policy was and most importantly train the staff, especially the frontline members of staff, to understand the new policy. So going forward, we can minimize the difficulties of people getting access to government services to get, to get um, attention. So between the receipt of the approval from the cabinet and today, what we have done was ask each ministry, division, and agency to identify customer service representatives who would be the arbiters of any issues that may arise between the frontline staff and members of the public seeking to enter. So if a member of a frontline, if a frontline staff member concludes that even with the relaxed policy, a particular person is inappropriately dressed. We have the more senior customer service reps who can be approached to make a decision as to how this member of staff should be, member of the public should be treated with. Even if he or she is not allowed to enter, what we are trying to do is make arrangements to ensure that the service that is being sought is received in a reasonable manner. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, we embarked on a program of training of mainly the frontline staff and the customer service representatives. I've been advised that we have trained a total of 431 people, which represents a reasonable um, cross-section of the public service, both in Trinidad and in Tobago. We had physical sessions at um, Ministry of the Attorney General's Auditorium and SAPA in San Fernando, and we had virtual sessions to accommodate people who were not able to attend at either of those two sessions. So essentially, the dress code goes into effect from Monday the 15th, and briefly, 
we will get into more detail on what it, into, what it means going um, later on in the program. But briefly, what we're asking you to do is ensure that your upper body is covered, that your lower body is covered at least up to mid-thigh, that you may wear um, a face mask for whatever reason. Some people are still wearing it for health reasons. Some people wear it for religious reasons, for example. But if you do wear a face mask and it conceals your features, you may be asked to remove it so that we can quickly see what you look like and that there's no threat. And in those cases, we'll allow you in. In circumstances where the face mask, it's a niqab, for example, worn for religious reasons to protect the modesty of the woman associated with that religion, we will not require those persons to expose their face in public. We'll take them into a private um, area and then they can um, reveal who they are and we'll allow them to continue with the service. Footwear is mandatory, but that's the only requirement with respect to footwear. What we are asking you to do is ensure that whatever footwear you choose allows you to be safe. And you will remember that in different circumstances, you may require for your protection to um, reconsider the mode of footwear. So if you're going into an area where construction is happening, for example, you may not, you may not want to wear slippers. That may not be um, advisable. So essentially, those are the rules which um, my co Colleen will go into in a, a bit more detail later. What we're asking you not to do is to not have vulgar displays of, in respect of your clothing or in respect of any signage or pictures or whatever on your clothing. No swimwear, no share clothing, no bareback, no vulgar obscene messages or images, and no gang symbols, which is the last being to protect the, um, to ensure that we don't encourage any outbreak of violence in our public spaces, which will put our public at risk. So the objective and focus of the policy, and in fact the objective and focus of all that we are doing at the Ministry of Public Admin under our PSIP and other programs, is to ensure that we are able to serve the public expeditiously, efficiently, and provide them with satisfaction. Our, our approach is a client-centric approach. So that is why in looking at the policy and in looking at all our programs, we are trying to ensure that we put things in place so that to the extent reasonably feasible, we can satisfy the needs of the public. And in doing that, our approach is to find ways to provide the required service rather than hiding behind archaic rules and regulations. So essentially, that is our, um, the background, the rationale, and the policy itself. And as I said, we start this policy with effect from the 15th of January, which is Monday, and we have trained the frontline staff we are hoping that because of that training, we will not have any negative incidents. But if we do, feel free to request the attention of the customer service reps who will be available in each of the ministries, agencies, and divisions. And if you do not get satisfaction there, feel free to reach out to the Ministry of Public Admin, and we will seek to address and correct the problem. So essentially, that is what I have to say to you this morning. I will pass over to the PS to continue with the program, and I'll be back for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Minister West. <laughs> All right, so as, as Minister accurately indicated, our efforts through the current policy are really to enhance and improve the delivery of public services to all members of the national community. It is really a step in the direction of liberalizing service delivery, or certainly the, the requirements for service delivery. Again, there are other mechanisms that we have put in place in the recent past, issues related to digitalization of services, services being more available online, um, enhanced training for persons involved in service delivery, 
but certainly you can enhance the delivery of service by making the access to those services more, more, more open and amenable. So we certainly applaud the, the arrival of the policy and we hope for continued improvements in service delivery. As Minister indicated, we have Ms. Colleen Galazzi of our Modernization and Service Improvement Delivery Div Division who will come next to speak to some of the do's and don'ts associated with the policy and she will be ably assisted by a cast of our staff who will be portraying some of the um, dress elements that we may see or may not want to see going forward. Go. Thank you, Colleen. Good morning, colleagues, um, all protocols observed. So before I get into sharing about the do's and don'ts, I just wanted to take this opportunity to share a bit about what we shared with our participants over the past two days. Um, the target audience consisted of security guards, receptionists, customer service reps, and also the service managers. And the, the end goal, what we shared with them, is that this policy is about improving service delivery to our citizens, our residents, and also investors that interact with government entities. And we must strive um, and utilize all options possible to ensure that all of our clients, um, when they come to receive government services, that they do so successfully. So let's get into the, some of the do's and don'ts of the, the policy. So the standard dress code, it provides for appropriate coverage. It does say to refrain from wearing clothing that expose the body in any kind of vulgar manner. And vulgar manner could be subjected to interpretation, but I think we all adults and professionals, we understand what vulgar means. It speaks to appropriate footwear, which is mandatory. Do ensure that footwear does not pose a safety concern. So if you're wearing slippers or sandals, ensure that there's a grip that's attached to it. With regards to decency, one of the other key elements of the dress code is avoid wearing clothing or accessories that display inappropriate or obscene messages or pictures that may be offensive to others. With regards to the head and face covering, which are allowed, but headwear, once it obscures the facial features, um, persons will be asked to remove their headwear. So I've got here with me today some members of staff. Yesterday they were hailing all the way from California, Hollywood, so today I'm not sure what vicinity they're in. But they're going to display for us and go through the, the do's, what you can do, what you can wear um, entering a government entity. So the first one up, it says cover up the body, the chest, Sleeveless clothing is permitted. Please ensure that your lower body covering, if you can come to the center, please ensure that your lower body covering is not higher than mid thigh. Yes, wear appropriate footwear to prevent slippage and falls. All of these displays are now permitted within government offices. Wear headwear and facial coverings that don't obscure the face. So this young lady is wearing a dress that is mid-length, sleeveless. So this is now a law allowed in government services. And before, where this was not allowed, you can now enter government entity wearing your vest and your jeans. And I see he's wearing slippers today, all matching, lovely in blue. So thank you for that. So those are some of the do's. Now, with regards to the don'ts, let me share the don'ts with you. We didn't want to have our staff parading in the don'ts, so we just had them do the, the positive sides. With regards to the don'ts, it says, don't be inappropriately exposed. And what that means is no swimwear. And I doubt anyone would really come to a government office in a swimwear, yes? No share clothing. We had some examples coming out of the training over the past two days whereby persons um, encountered individuals who would have come with sheer tops and limited underbody covering. So apparently that's something that can happen. And also no um, bareback is, is allowed. With regards to the other don't, it says don't wear clothing or accessories that display inappropriate or obscene messages or pictures. Now one of the key messages that we shared with regards to the don't 
don't does not equal no service. What it means, as service providers, we need to come up with solutions and extend all possible solutions to ensure that our citizens, our residents, and our investors engaging in government business get the service that they came for at the ending of the day. So there should be no returning individuals. So those were the key messages coming out yesterday and also the day before. As the minister mentioned, we had a target of about 200 persons. We surpassed that target. Um, it was quite interactive as well. Um, quite a lot of questions um, in persons' minds, some doubts and so forth. And I think some persons really thought the policy was going to be a little bit more rigid. But when they realize how relaxed the policy is now, um, I think they will be able to embrace it. And um, I did share with them that our minister sent us out on a mandate to ensure by Monday the 15th of January 2024 that we will have no incidents and no reports of individuals, our clients or visitors, being turned away from accessing government services. So we look forward to seeing that happen on Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Galazzi. And I think the message um, from Colleen, while initially addressed to the citizens and the members of the national community who will be accessing services in terms of what is now acceptable, there's also a message that goes out to our frontline personnel, the receptionists, the security officers, the CSRs, who are the first point of contact, that they now need to treat with citizens, with persons accessing services in a particular manner. Issues relating to courtesy, making people feel like people, you know what I mean? The whole issue of how the, the, the service delivery journey is executed. Even as you welcome people, it is done courteously. Even if you have to indicate to someone that uh, there's something a bit off with your, with your attire today, steps will be made to address that so that no one is turned away. Right? So we are solutions oriented, we are service delivery oriented. The word minister used, the term minister used was customer centric, which means that the entire service delivery process from design of the product or the service to its delivery is centered around the citizen or the person accessing the service. So it is both a policy for persons accessing the service as well as for the persons who deliver the service. At this point, we would like to welcome Minister West back to the lectern, and at this time, she will feel and welcome questions from the media. So I will invite Minister back to the lectern. Um, what we ask is that persons wishing to pose questions to Minister um, raise their hands so that we can acknowledge them. Um, before you ask, pose your question, identify yourself by name and media house. Thank you, Minister. once. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good day, Minister. Welcome. Um, I didn't catch the first part of the presentation, but one or two little details to question. Um, cut up jeans. There are the young people now, they have the denim jeans and it's actually sold. They purchase it mm -hmm. with these cuts in it. Mm -hmm. So I would ask about that. Um, the second thing is short pants. And I mean, short, when I say shorts, it could be a baggy shorts or maybe a tight fitting shorts, I don't know. Um, third thing I would ask about religious wear, um, could there may be some religious, um, traditional religious attire that um, obscures the face, because your colleague could said about facial features. Um, and I did have one more, actually. I don't know if you want them all. The, the, the other one was if you're ministry has a relationship with the Ministry of Education because uh, any school in Trinidad now you visit, you'll see a big sign on the door or, or, or at the front gate, not just saying what the children are entitled to or are mandated to wear internally, but what school visitors, big people, big men and women have to wear going in. There's actually you know, no shorts and 
all this. So I was going to ask if there's any relationship between your ministry and the Ministry of Education for school visitors, or, or even if it's like an advisory capacity. So, so those are the questions. Um, ripped jeans, shorts, traditional religious wear, and schools. Thank okay. you. So the stress jeans are allowable. The, the overriding approach that we are asking the public to adhere to is decency. So that even with distressed jeans, there are different categories of distressed jeans and where the distress goes. So we are asking you to be decent, but distressed jeans are fine. Shorts are also fine. Again, the um, requirement is that it not be shorter than mid -thigh. Yes? So again, for decency purposes, because we are dealing with all kinds of members of the public, so we want to ensure that we don't distress the grandmother who comes for service, the same way we don't distress the teenager who comes for service. So decency and all things. Um, the religious covering, I covered that. Yes, that is allowed. But if the features are obscured, what we will ask the person to do is accompany the security guard or the receptionist into a private area so they can reveal the facial features and then they'll be allowed to, to um, put their, their niqab or whatever it is back on and continue with their service. With respect to the Ministry of Education, of course, as with all ministries, we do have a relationship with them. But let me make it clear, this policy is for off government offices. So government venues that are not offices are not covered by this policy. This would include schools, hospitals, police stations, health centers, community centers, sporting um, venues. All of these things are not covered by this policy. This is for people going to government offices to receive government services. Is that it, question-wise? Okay. Sorry about this. I should ask about Tobago, because yes. there may be a higher proportion of visitors. Uh, uh, there may be certain public services, the tourists, or, I mean, even now we're getting cruise ships coming mm -hmm. here. Um, so I, I don't know if there was, yeah, any comments on that. Please. Well, the policy does apply to all central government offices, including those in Tobago. So we have done some training of persons in Tobago. That, unfortunately, was done virtually, but we do plan to visit them and have face-to-face um, -face training very soon. Um, so that, yes, all of these rules will apply to those offices. We have visitors to offices in Trinidad as well, so that will apply across the board. And again, focus on decency and ensuring that to the extent possible, we can provide the service that is required. <laughs> Just leave the microphone, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you had to use an adjective yes. to describe what, it, what the policy was before yes. to what the new policy would be, mm -hmm. I don't have to throw out any, um, if you want to use the word liberalization, clarification, um, formalization of, of existing practice. Is there any adjective you'd want to? The policy before was a combination of archaic and rigid. What we have tried to do is introduce a more relaxed policy to accommodate the provision of services. I do believe that that is it for questions. So, excuse me.
Yes, I was asked off record about the courts. The courts have their own um, requirements, as do offices like the immigration. Anywhere you go for a government picture, there are specific rules that apply to those. So licensing, if you're going to take out a picture for your license, the Immigration and the Election and Boundaries Commission, there are special rules that apply to those, as there are special rules that apply to the court. So just bear that in mind. These rules tend to be available on the website of the respective agencies, and I recommend that to you um, look into those. Going back to Sean's questions with the schools, some people may react negatively to the fact that there are specific rules in terms of the dress wear for schools that are probably not going to be significantly relaxed, but you need to remember that we are training the, na the nation's children and we are trying to set examples for them. So if they say to you, as parents or as other adults, please do not come into school in shorts because we're trying to set proper examples for the children. I just ask that you, are, that you facilitate that approach and understand why it is what it is. Okay, so I thank you very much for coming. Um, as I said, the Ministry of Public Admin is going to continue to monitor what is happening with the policy. If we need to make adjustments, if we need to do more training, we will continue to do that with our focus being always to ensure that our citizens and other stakeholders are properly served by the public service. So thank you very much. Have a good day and stay safe. Welcome to this morning's Playway Pick 2 and Pick 4 Draw, supervised by independent auditors KPMG and presided over by the National Lotteries Control Board. Good luck, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the NLCB's Playway Pick 2, Pick 4 Draw and our Playway Bacchanal Draw promotion for Friday, 12th January 2024. We begin with our Bacchanal Draw promotion. Here's how this promotion works. There are two white balls and a golden Bacchanal ball in the machine. If you wager on at least one Mega Mix option and the gold ball calls, you can win $30 for every $1 played on the base, $90 with the Mega Ball, $110 with the Mega Ultra and $135 with the Mega Extreme Ball. Players, a white ball has called. Keep on trying. Remember, you can win more when the Bacchanal ball calls. Now for winning a playway number. And the winning playway number is 34, the lucky mark, blind man. That number again, 34, the lucky mark, blind man. Players, it's time for your chance at higher Megamix winnings. Remember, Megamix options cost an additional $1 each. Players, a playway number 34, the lucky mark blind man, has called with all white balls. Remember, you can win more when the Bacchanal ball calls. Next, we draw our winning picture numbers. The first picture number is 21. That one again is 21. Now for the second picture number. And the 
second picture number is nine. That number again is nine. Our picture numbers are 21 and nine in that order. Our pick two mega machine has been loaded with two white balls and a mega ball for our mega to the max draw. If the white ball calls, there'd be no extra payout. Once players wager a minimum of $5 on the mega ball, they win the original prize of $2,000, plus the promotional prize of $6,000 for matching two numbers in the correct order. Players pick two numbers 21 and nine in that order called with a white ball. Keep on playing. Remember, you have a one in three chance of a mega payout. And now for pick four numbers. The first pick four number is nine. That number again is nine. The second pick four number is two. That number again is two. The third pick for number is nine. That number is nine. And the fourth and final pick for number is eight. That number again is eight. I repeat, this morning's winning pick for numbers are nine, two, nine, and eight in that order. Congratulations to all our winners. In some cash pot news, two lucky players who chose yesterday's five winning numbers, each one is $77,080. Congratulations to our fortunate cash pot winners. Remember, don't wait to be a winner. Level up with our Scratch game set for life and payday. 30 chances to win. Get your Scratch tickets now. And players, you deserve a win. With your Win for Life ticket, you can play once for a chance to win twice with the added Win and Drive promotion. Your Win for Life bet automatically gives you a chance to drive off with a Suzuki Vitara for no extra cost. The Win and Drive draw takes place immediately after the Win for Life draw tonight at 7. Get your Win for Life tickets to Win and Drive. Thank you for joining us. Do so again at 1 p.m. for another Playway, Pick 2 and Pick 4 draw. by 20, 50 by 25. This is Kyron Pollard. When you play, do it the legal way. Don't bet on illegal gaming. Being a winner, it's a very, very um, exciting experience. Words can't really describe how excited I feel. <laughs>